Good morning and thank you for joining us for our program on this Lord's Day morning. I hope that you're doing well and I would love for you to come and visit with us today at the Pyburn Street Church of Christ. We will gather this morning for Bible study at 9 o'clock followed by worship at 9.50. We will gather again this evening at 6 o'clock for our evening worship and tonight is our monthly singing night and devotional. And then we also gather on Wednesday evenings at 6 o'clock for midweek Bible study. We extend an invitation to you to come and to be our honored guest at any or all of these upcoming services. There is perhaps no other biblical book that places more emphasis on the picture of Jesus as God in the flesh than the Gospel of John. In its opening words, John affirms boldly what he calls the Word that was in the beginning with God and was God. Now we're not left to wonder for long the identity of that which is called the Word. Only a few verses in the text, John explains through the Holy Spirit, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, John 1 and verse 14. The rest of the gospel goes on to tell the story of this incarnate or personified word of God, Jesus Christ. Now before we leave the opening chapter, we've already learned a number of things about Jesus as the word of God. First, he is the creator. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made, John 1 and verse 3. The Bible begins with the declaration, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, Genesis 1 and verse 1. If Jesus, as the Word of God, is said to have made all things, then the clear assertion is that Jesus is God. Next, Jesus is described as existing within the bosom of God the Father. John explains no one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him, John 1 and verse 18. Now, some translations, such as the NIV, the ESV, English Standard Version, have taken this figuratively in just the sense, at the Father's side. But that may miss the point. In Scripture, to speak of something in the bosom of another person is a way of describing something as belonging to the person or sharing a unique intimacy with him or her. While it can refer to those maintaining a separate identity, in the context, this is likely an affirmation of Jesus' unity with God the Father. Jesus would say later, I am in the Father, and the Father in me, John 14 and verse 10. While Jesus may be described as standing at the right hand of God, Acts 7, verses 55 and 56, the Bible also clearly describes the deity of Christ. This is clear in other statements that Jesus makes throughout the gospel. He affirmed to Nicodemus while on the earth that although he came down from heaven, he was also in heaven, John 3 and verse 13. On a separate occasion, when speaking to the Jews in Jerusalem, he declared, I am not alone, but I am with the Father who sent me, John 8 and verse 16. Only God may be said to fill heaven and earth, as Jeremiah stated in Jeremiah 23 and verse 24. When Jesus was criticized for healing on the Sabbath, he declared, My Father has been working until now, And I have been working, John 5 and verse 17. The clear inference of this statement was that Jesus had been working from the beginning, just as God the Father had. And John explains that the Jews understood that by saying God was his Father, they considered him to be making himself equal to God, John 5 and verse 18. And how interesting that John felt no compulsion to explain that Jesus was not equal to God. Why? Because John understood their conclusion to be correct, that Jesus is 
equal to God. In the same context, Jesus affirmed his power to call forth the resurrection of the, on the last day, John 5 and verse 21, and to proclaim judgment. Later, Jesus would declare that his words would judge all people on the last day, John 12 and verse 48. In fact, in this gospel, Jesus was said to know what was in man, John 2 and verse 25. And only God knows the thoughts of man, according to Acts 5 and verse 8. And the Bible teaches that only God is the judge of all the earth, Genesis 18 and verse 25. So if Jesus is the judge, then Jesus is God. Jesus claimed to be from above, John 8 and verse 23. And on another occasion, from the Father, as one who had seen the Father. Yet in the same verse, he declared that no one else had seen the Father, John 6 and verse 46. In this, he claimed a status for himself different from all other human beings. And perhaps one of the most striking declarations that Jesus made came in a discussion with the Jews about Abraham. As Jesus affirmed that they did not display the character and attitude of Abraham, they questioned his claim to know Abraham's attributes. Jesus, how, how do you know? How do you even know what Abraham was like? And Jesus declared, Before Abraham was, I am, John 8 and verse 58. With this statement, Jesus used the very words by which God had told Moses to identify him to the children of Israel. And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. By identifying himself as I am, Jesus deliberately demonstrated his deity. And this was clear to the Jewish leaders because John 8 and verse 59 says that when they heard this, they picked up stones to kill him. They believed that what he had done was commit blasphemy. Jesus declared his power to resurrect himself after his death in John 10, verses 17 and 18. And yet the Bible teaches that it was God who raises the dead, 2 Corinthians 1 and verse 9. And even concerning Jesus, that God raised him from the dead, Acts 13 and verse 30. Well, clearly, Jesus and New Testament writers are affirming Christ's deity. Jesus said it quite simply in his declaration, I and my Father are one, John 10 and verse 30. The Bible doesn't teach three gods, but Jesus is a part or person of the one God of the Bible. While he possesses distinct will, as do all persons of the Godhead, he is one God with the Father and the Holy Spirit. When Jesus said this, once again, they tried to stone him. Because, according to John 10 and verse 33, because you, being a man, make yourself God. Isn't it interesting that, once again, neither John nor Jesus feel compelled to explain, no, Jesus isn't God. What Jesus did was refer them to the scriptural use of the Word of God in application to human judges. Why wouldn't Jesus rebuke them for accusing him of something that he was not claiming? Because he was affirming his deity. In asserting that he was one with the Father, he was declaring himself to be God manifested in the flesh. During the final Passover meal, Jesus sat with his disciples and taught them that reception of him is equal to reception of God the Father, John 13 and verse 20. But also, he told them that hatred of him is equal to hatred of God the Father, John 15, 24. Now during this same lesson, when Philip asked him, Lord, show us the Father, John 14 and verse 8, Jesus declared very plainly, he said, He who has seen me has seen the Father, John 14 and verse 9. 
Now I want you to think about it. Think of how arrogant this would have been, how blasphemous this would have been if Jesus was not God in the flesh. Can you imagine Moses, Elijah, Peter, or Paul saying such words? If you have seen me, you have seen the Father? Jesus' deity is the only explanation by which these words are not an act of sin. Because Jesus is God, could it be true that one who had seen him could be said to have seen the Father, not in the fullness of his glory, but in the divine image of Jesus as God in the flesh? Jesus asserted himself as the only way to a relationship with God the Father in John 14 and verse 6. And Jesus claimed that knowledge of him is equivalent to knowledge of God the Father, John 14 and verse 7. Jesus claimed that in loving Jesus and keeping his commandments, both he and God the Father would make their home with such a person, John 14 and verse 23. And while Jesus did declare, My Father is greater than I, in John 14 and verse 26, this probably referred to Jesus' fleshly state, or was said as a demonstration of Jesus' submission toward God the Father. Now in the last pages of John's Gospel, the Holy Spirit continues to assert plainly the deity of Christ. In the extended prayer that Jesus offers just before going into Gethsemane, he claims to have shared glory with God the Father before the world was, John 17 and verse 5. In his prayer for the unity of his disciples, he repeatedly appeals to his own oneness with the Father as the pattern he desires his disciples to follow. In this, once again, Jesus proclaims, You, Father, are in me, and I in you, John 17 and verse 21. Now, after the horror of his trial and crucifixion, Jesus demonstrated his deity in his resurrection and in his ability to appear in the midst of the disciples inside a locked house. When Thomas, one of the disciples who did not see this appearance, saw him and believed in his resurrection, he proclaimed, My Lord, and my God, John 20 and verse 28. Friends, if Jesus was not God in the flesh, then this would have been the perfect occasion for him to say, no, that's not true. No, that is a false perception. That's what Paul and Barnabas did. They said, we also are men in the same nature as you. That's what John the baptizer did when some of those hearing him preach believed that he was the Messiah. He said, no, he said, there is one coming after me, one that is greater than me. But Jesus did not say that he had the same nature as man. One of his disciples said, my Lord and my God. In the verses that follow this, Jesus praised Thomas for his belief. And John affirmed that his gospel was written to motivate this same kind of belief. Now what is this belief that was praised and the gospel was intended to motivate? It was the firm belief that can move one to speak of Jesus Christ of Nazareth as my Lord and my God. Friends, indeed, more than any other book, the Gospel of John attests to the fact that Jesus was God in the flesh, that he left the joys of heaven and came and he took on the form of a man, and he lived as 100% man and 100% God. No, his nature was not like that of other men, because he was God in the flesh. And just as Thomas stated, He is our Lord and our God. Friends, we thank you for joining us for our program on this Lord's Day morning. and We pray that God blesses you with a wonderful day.